Welcome to this week's edition of Ask Peter Costas right here on CBSSports.com. I'm Lauren Shahadi. Glad to have you with us. You're looking for a golf tip or two. Let's get right to it. Rick writes in first. He writes, what is the best drill to improve solid ball striking? The best advice for choosing the right ball and grip size. You know, Rick, that's a great question. Actually, it's a great three questions. What you want to do to improve your ball striking is avoid the temptation of starting off with big, full, hard swings where your body is dominating your hands and arms. Instead, go for what I call mini swing success before full swing success. That means take a wedge, learn to cock your wrist and swing your arms back a little bit, learn to strike down, spin the ball up in the air correctly in little miniature swing form. Then you can eventually go on to a five iron. Learn again, mini swing success before full swing success, because quite frankly, if your swing isn't correct from here to here, it can't possibly be correct all the way up to the top and into your follow through. So mini swing success before full swing success is the way to develop better ball striking. As far as your grip size is concerned, when you grip the club correctly, your fingertips ought to just barely touch your thumb pad on your lead hand. If the grip is too small, you'll feel your thumb pad and the fingers underneath it. If you can't get your fingers to your thumb pad, then the grip is too big. So just barely touch your fingertips to your thumb pad for the correct grip size. As far as golf ball is concerned, you know, they all go pretty far these days. I suggest testing it in the short game area. Get a ball that you really feel comfortable with chipping and putting. It gives you the best feel, the best spin, and the best control. And then you can always modify your driver if you need to, to make it go as far as possible off the tee. Question number two is from Stephanie. I just purchased a used sand wedge. The club face is rusted. I read the rule book, but would like clarification if this club is legal as it is. There's a section talking about foreign substance that I think the rust would fall under. If it is ruled that, I have to remove the rust. What is the best way to do this without altering the club face from the original manufactured state? Hey, Stephanie, congratulations to you. Props to you for reading the rule book. But According to the rules and the decisions on the rules, rust on the face of a club isn't a foreign substance. So you haven't violated any rules there as far as getting the rust off of your wedge. What you might like to do is just practice your wedge game, especially in a bunker. Hit a whole bunch of bunker shots. You'll improve your bunker play and, and gradually that sand will wear off the rust that's on the face. If there's any more left over, you can go back to old school technology like I did when I was a kid and just sit the club head in a glass of Coke overnight, get it out in the morning, wash it off, wipe it off, and all the rust will be gone. Good luck, Steph. Let's leave the last question to Greg. He writes in, Matt Kuchar has changed his swing from very upright to very flat. Why would he do this, and what benefit would he gain from the change? Maybe he could show his swing change on this week's broadcast. Greg, great question. You know, most of the time, when players are on the extreme edge of upright or flat, there's a reason for it. In Matt Kuchar's case, when the hands got really high, his body would get way out in front, and he would get what we call stuck. And so the best way for him to get his arms and his body coordinated, some use the term connected, at least working together, was for him to swing the club much more around his body. That kept his arm closer to his body, and then all he had to do from there is really unwind his body as hard as possible, and the arm would stay against the left chest, and he could return the club face squarely to the golf ball. You know, there is no one swing plane for everybody. You have to find the one that's right for you. If you're more upright, you're gonna to tend to have more arm freedom and require more aggressive arm swing coming down. If you're more flat or around, you're gonna to have to use more body action. Find the one that's right for you. Good stuff, Peter. If you have any questions, submit them right here at cbssports.com. We'll get you answers. Thanks so much for watching Ask Peter Costas. Until next time.